Hey everyone, so while I'm on, you know, some deliveries, I don't know if I'll get any good ones while I'm driving or when I park, but a topic I want to speak about is just condemnation that we could receive. And most likely, it's something that we receive from other believers. You know, where we feel like we're not living up to their expectations that they have of us. Uh, what they read in scripture, and I believe try to follow themselves, and they enforce it through their actions and their words. And, you know, when a mistake is made, they beat you down with what it says in scripture. And, you know, I have dealt with that condemnation. I have dealt with not measuring up to their expectations, to anybody's expectations. And, you know, there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that make mistakes. You know, and I am not at all giving an okay to sin. I'm not okay with, you know, giving people the right to sin because when you sin, then your flesh is master over, you know, your will. You can allow that to happen. And if it's a master, then it's something that you really need to, through God, and when you're tempted, you know, God, it says in scripture that God provides a way out for us to stand up under it. And, you know, it, it's just, it, it takes at that moment, finding out how we can deal with not, you know, with the temptation at that moment. What are we going to do at that moment? Are we going to go through with our flesh and that temptation, or are we going to just walk away, seek God and deny it? You know, and it takes so many times to try to master it, to remove the flesh as a master so that the spirit will reign. But there are a lot of people that sometimes the temptation is just so much that, you know, you know, when, you know, desire gives birth to sin and sin when it's full blown is gives birth to death. So, you know, it's conquering that desire, not wanting to sin anymore. And there are a lot of people that still deal with it, you know, and so those that think that they have mastered the sin and have conquered it will beat others down with the expectations that they have on them, you know, of what it says in scripture, you know, you didn't do this right. And they hit you over the head with what you did wrong. And, you know, the person that made the mistake, I mean, there's a difference. Are they sorry for it? You know, and if they are sorry for it and are genuinely repentant, you know, it's God that's doing the work. But if somebody's not sorry about it, then are they really born of God? That's the thing. But anybody that has dealt with, you know, being tempted and going through with it, you know, if God's spirit and God's seed is in them, they're going to be grievous of that exact thing. So, you know, I have dealt with mistakes of my past, you know, going through with the flesh, being tempted and dealing with not measuring up, you know, dealing with the condemnation from it. You know, I know what it says in scripture, you know, and so Whenever I do wrong, the, the scriptures would play in my mind over and over again. And, you know, I remember when 
I was in an old relationship. You know, I personally, I tried to do Bible studies all the time because I knew of my weakness. If my mind was not focused on God, then the flesh would then be the focus. And that's exactly what happened in that relationship. You know, the flesh became the focus. You know, I allowed myself to get tempted. I didn't fight it, you know. And so I dealt with the condemnation of that. And so when I tried applying back to the Bible college that I wanted to go back, and it wasn't because of any kind of ministry or anything. I wanted to see my friends, which was the wrong motive. But when I tried to apply back, they wrote back and said, we don't know where you're headed, but it's not here. So I took that as them saying, as far as we can concern, you know, you can go off to your own destruction. We don't care about you. You know, we're not going to help you deal with any struggles. You know, you, you need to deal with uh, the fruit of your decisions. And there was no consoling or anything. There was no talking with me. And so I dealt with so much condemnation from them. And it, it was so hard getting over because I thought, you know, when they said that letter to me, I thought I had God's disapproval. I thought God was really angry with me. You know, I didn't have any like personal experiences of, you know, Jesus showing his love. I know what it said in scripture. And even though I was dealing with the condemnation, I still loved God, you know, but when I got to the church that I attend now, you know, we're talking about God's love and stuff like that. And that was something I never heard, you know, previous messages, you know, it'd be at a Pentecostal church and, you know, a lot of the messages were, you know, sin and, you know, there was really no God's, no talk about God's grace or anything, just what I need to do to measure up. So when I heard these messages, it really hit home. And I recall <clears throat> just with the issues of condemnation, I, and then I was coming, you know, I was having these messages from the church talking about God's love. So it was like the two were clashing, you know, and God's love and it being spoke about, it resonated with me. So I recall when I went to sleep at night, I had this dream and I said this in other videos too, but I want to say it for my hearers, anybody that's dealing with condemnation, I'm praying that this dream that I have will bless you because, it, you know, it wasn't only Jesus coming to me in my dream, but it's like his message for anybody that is dealing with condemnation and for not measuring up. So in the dream, I was in a crowded room and I heard a voice behind me saying, that's Jesus. And it was referring to a woman that was walking. And so I walked up to her. I said, are you Jesus? She didn't answer to me. She went to another part of the room. So I followed her. I said, are you Jesus Christ? And she nodded her head like that. And the dream was about to end until it came to again. And it was me and this man in this room. And no lie, I felt so much love coming from him. And I knew without a doubt that it was God. It was Jesus. And I asked him because in my heart, I wanted to know how he really felt about me. You know, was he dis, was he angry with me? Did he disapprove of me? You know, did he hate me? Like all these other, you know, religious teachers from that Bible college, how they reacted toward me. So I asked him, I said, do you, how much do you love me? And he's like, no, how much do you love me? And what I said was like, oh man, but he heard my heart. Because my heart said, words can't express how much I love you. But when I went, oh man, he laughed. But he didn't laugh at me. It's like being in a, a conversation with somebody. And, you know, you're laughing about the same topic. You know, 
but he was laughing as if there was a relationship there that he knew me. He knew my mannerisms. He knew my personality. He knew what I thought was funny. He knew everything about me. And, and so I asked him, I said, or I made the statement. I said, Lord, I want to know. I want to know that I'm your bright and shining star. And so he walked up to me and he picked me up. And out of every pore of my body, light came out of. And I remember in the dream falling to my knees and crying. And when I woke up, I had tears in my eyes. And I never doubted his love after that. From that dream, he showed me how he really felt. And it wasn't toward me only this message is for everybody that's dealing with condemnation that no matter the mistakes that you make no matter what you had done in the past you know decisions you've made that were from the flesh you know mistakes that you made god loves you and you know this isn't a message of course giving the okay and the right to sin it's not that at all but it's letting you know that no matter the mistakes you've made, God is going to help you get through them. And by his spirit, he's going to lead you, you know, to become more and more like him, you know, to full maturity. We're all in a process together of, you know, moving away from the flesh and moving on into the spirit to maturity and doing what God wants us to do. So if anything, I pray that this video has blessed you and encouraged you. And if you're dealing with condemnation, just know that God does not see you like that. Not like people see you, not how people treat you. That's not how God sees you. God's love isn't like man's where it's conditional. God's love is unconditional. There is nothing that we can say or do that would cause him to stop loving us. You know, in a relationship, we all have disagreements, you know. And so when we're angry with somebody, of course, you know, there's that potential of them getting upset with us and we don't talk anymore. Well, God's not like that. If we're angry with God about our, all our past issues and stuff and we don't agree with what he does and how you know, long it takes for him to bring about through us the promises. We could get angry with him, but God understands. I mean, there's a difference between reverence and relationship, you know. So I just really want to encourage you with this message, and I pray that it blesses you. Thank you for taking the time to watch.